welcome to the vlog. My name is Alexis Barber. If you are new here, I'm 22. I live in New York City. I probably shouldn't introduce this vlog looking so insane, but I just woke up and felt like vlogging today. I have so much to do in work, and then I have a little bit of content to also focus on. I'm just gonna take you through a day in my life, trying to manage it all. reshot my sponsored content. I actually really do love this brand. It's Capsule. It's like basically free prescription delivery service, which is iconic because I personally am someone who will always leave my stuff at the pharmacy because it's so annoying. So I'm really happy to work with brands that I like actually am obsessed with, like Nike, this. I'm just so grateful. Woke up in such a grateful mood today. So I'm just resending her the content and I just uploaded it and everything after I journaled. Now I'm just looking through my email to be sure that there's no outstanding things. In my email, it doesn't seem like there's anything wild. And that means that then I will just take a look at it this evening because it's already nine o'clock and I want to make sure that I get my work done today, like at work, because there's a few exciting things that I'm working on. If there's nothing wild, like yes, I could go through all these emails and respond to all these people, but there's nothing that is like massively pressing, like none of my paid sponsorships are popping up and there's no paid sponsorships with any brands I'm obsessed with in my inbox. So I'm just gonna put my laptop away or I'll probably leave it open because I like to listen to lo-fi beats and transition to my real job. So something we're gonna talk about in this vlog today is how I am not personally obsessed with my nine to five. When I was in the business scene at Northwestern, really thought that I wanted to be a corporate something. As much as in my core, I loved entrepreneurship. I even minored in entrepreneurship. I was also always listening to podcasts about entrepreneurship, etc. I always was like corporation structure. Like I need the structure. Like I need to work for someone first, which is really interesting because I was always comparing myself to my boyfriend and my boyfriend's parents are both entrepreneurs and he always wanted to be an entrepreneur and always had this feeling of like, oh, I just want to work for myself. And I never felt that way. And I think it's because I never saw how flexible your life can be when you do work for yourself. I need to be passionate about what I'm doing in order to actually show up for it. And when I don't have, when I have a project at work that I'm not 100% passionate about, it is really hard for me to focus on it. When you're working at a company where everyone is really successful and type A and smart, everyone's doing good work. So the only thing left is what people think of you. And I don't like managing other people's opinions of me in when I know that like the work can speak for itself sometimes. And I'm not saying I've encountered that personally. It's just what I see happen. And I just really don't like that. So I am using my time at Google as a time for me to really learn about myself, to get as many skills and as much of a network as possible out of it. And I am not holding myself to the standard of needing to be obsessed with my job and have it fulfill me because it's not going to. At the end of the day, like Google's main job is to sell ads and that's not something that I 100% and like, I'm so happy that I get to do this. And there's plenty of other ways where you can be fulfilled. Like I think no one ever told me that it's okay to not be obsessed with your corporate job. It's okay to not have your identity be in your work. Focus on finding something that fulfills all of your requirements 
if that requirement is to have a really high salary and have and you are willing to sacrifice your time in life to do something like banking okay great that's fulfilling your requirement my requirement is to have great benefits a great network and to be able to do something interesting and close my laptop at six so that i can make sure that i can create content which is something i'm actually passionate about until i find something that is both as lucrative and as helpful to me to be able to do what i love so i just really hate when people set up this false idea that like when you graduate your job is going to be everything to you because it's not all of us everyone who graduated a year ago with me none of us are obsessed with our jobs and we were so obsessed with finding that job after school or getting that dream job and your dream your corporate job is not always going to fulfill you dare i say it's never going to fulfill you so please find something that's interesting to you and don't, if you're going into starting a job, it is not going to be, it doesn't have to be everything, okay? I've been redundant, but I just wanted to say that. Now I'm gonna read my emails. So let's chat about my actual job after I just told you not to be obsessed with your job. I do think it's important for me to just be honest about what I do. So I am on YouTube for small and medium businesses, which is focused primarily on helping small and medium businesses use YouTube ads successfully or use YouTube successfully. I am in charge of our email comms so if you start using ads as an smb the emails you get are run by me my team's collective job is to help smbs advertise on youtube successfully and grow their businesses so that ranges from our website to our big activations like we have a huge event next week that uh, people on my team have put so much work into for international small business day basically just helping smbs on youtube so if you aren't familiar with the structure of google Google is owned by Alphabet and Google owns YouTube. So there's the Google side of it and then there's the YouTube proper side of it. And business-wise, these are broken up into Google, which focuses on owns things like Google ads and video ads that are run on YouTube. But YouTube is obviously a different structure than Google is. So my team sits between the two. So we always are having to manage the Google expectations of ads focused, you know, OKR. So instead of key KPIs, we call them objectives and key results. So Google's goals versus YouTube's goals and bringing the branding into the two. So we sit, we report to both sides of the company. So for me, day to day this looks like redesigning emails checking in with our data to make sure that everything gets sent properly helping other people who are on different parts of the company if they want to send out an email to smbs and i need to approve it if it has anything to do with youtube i also of course just need to like show up for my group effectively so today what this looks like is i'm writing a brief for an agency because we want to send another email next quarter I'm attending our marketing meetup, which is uh, all hands of everyone in marketing. They're talking about our return to office today, so we're gonna get some more information there. I have a team meeting with the YouTube side of my team. I have a meeting with my agency partners who manage all of the projects um, to check in with them there. We are building out a project that is gonna happen for the next two quarters, and I wanna review it with them. And then I have three coffee chats. Coffee chats are a big part of my day on Wednesdays. I try to put them all on one day because otherwise they'll just like take me out of what I'm working on. So this afternoon from 2.30 to 5, I have four coffee chats actually. And this is where I'm just chatting with people. Sometimes it's interns. Sometimes it's just people that I've met throughout the company. None of these are like career focused, which is good because that's a lot. And then I'm also just preparing some documents for moving forward. So. That is what I do am doing today. And then in terms of how I approach my day, let's talk about that. So let's chat about how I organize and approach my day. And I'll first get out my notebook. I manage my tasks both in a notebook because I like to cross things off um, and I don't like writing everything out every week. And I also use a project management tracker that I created. I have that linked on my blog. If you want it, I'll link it below. And basically it does two things. So it has all of my projects for that whole quarter and all of my goals for that whole quarter on one sheet. And then I break it out by week and I break it out by project every week. So every week I write the big tasks that I'm doing for every single work stream that I'm involved in. And I cross it off, I include stakeholders, notes, etc. Even though I don't work well by like having it written out digitally, 
What this does is I then have a rec track record of every single task I have done in my entire time at Google, which is really helpful when you are going into a performance review or for example, I just switched managers this week because my manager went on maternity leave. Having all of that written in one place means that like you can never ever question any of the work I did, you know? And that's really important if you are in an entry level job, if you're a black person in a job, if you're a person from a marginalized background, you need to document everything, and I mean everything, because it's easy for people to take you less seriously, and you need to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row. And I hate that that's the truth, but that is what my experience has been. So have it all in one place, document everything really, really well, and this works no matter what kind of manager you have. If you have a manager that is very up in the clouds and you need to manage them a lot, or if you have a manager that's a micromanager, this will always be helpful if you document everything. But on the daily, I'll check in with that tricks, um, or at Google what we call sheets, trickses, weirdly. And then I will write in my notebook because the notebook, like I said, I love the crossing off feeling. And then I will take a look at my email. So um, first I check in to see if there's any pings. So pings are like Google chat. I just have ones that are like, thank you, wrapping things up today. Then I'll take a look at my calendar. So in my calendar, I have the morning blocked off to work on a creative brief and to make sure that I run the team meeting for our Google side of the team. So make sure that that's all good to go. Then we have a big marketing meeting today. Then we have a YouTube meeting and then I have four coffee chats. So some people, some meetings that I thought I had last night have been moved, which is okay because I didn't need to have them anyway. And then I will look um, at my email. So my email, I will just delete a lot, all of the things that are like not necessary for me to look into, check in on my big work streams, and then add whatever the responses I need to make are onto my to-do list. And then I will get started on my actual work. So let's get into it. We've paused for lunch. Just did a bunch of writing and strategic thinking. So now we are gonna cook. Then you just massage. Just do this for like three minutes until it's thoroughly mixed. This is what it looks like now. So then I'll take off the glove and I'm gonna add some walnuts and then I'll have the salmon on top and it's a seven minute lunch. Iconic. So the last thing you saw was me eating lunch. It is now six. I had meetings from 12 to six. Well, 12 to 5.30 and at five, the meeting was actually with my Nike dietitian, which was great. We talked about how I need to plan for when I travel because I'm going to Nashville for five days for the 4th of July. My boyfriend's, one of his really good friends has a farm out there and we're staying there. So less control over food, all this stuff. And I have, done a lot of hard work to get rid of disordered eating patterns for the last year. That's sort of how I got my start. If you don't know, check out my podcast to hear more about it. But diet culture is deep rooted, all right? And there's the part of me that like wouldn't ever want to ask for what I needed when it came to food. And I have to fix that and get more specific about what I need when I'm in that situation. So I'm going to go ahead and plan for Nashville. So I've been doing some online shopping so I can get everything, all my ducks in a row because yes, it's in two weeks, but I just need to make sure that I have it down because the rest of my time is always thought of. So then I need to post in Consistency Club. I just posted a sponsored post for a brand. I just got another brand contract, which is really exciting with a brand that I actually really love. Now I kind of want to take a shower. I usually wait for Jeff to get here to take a shower. I want to take a shower and then we will cook dinner. Pour myself a glass of wine. The content has been posted on everything it needs to be posted on. A really big meeting tomorrow. I'm gonna be ready for it. It's fine. I'm gonna relax today, okay? Teaching myself boundaries. So now it is 6.45. I'm taking a shower, waiting for Jeff to arrive. Let's do it. Jeff got here late, so I had to turn on Real Housewives and then pause it so I'm 20 minutes behind. But a great hack is that he's now gonna watch it with me. 
because I made him get here late. Iconic. Just wanted to formally end this vlog of the day in my life as a content creator and Googler. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It means the world to me. And you can see more daily vlogs on my TikTok. I do them pretty much every day. And follow along my life on Instagram stories. If you want to know more about my career or other things that you should definitely think about from a career standpoint, especially if you're young and black, check out my podcast, Too Smart for This. I interview a ton of people who have been a part of my life, people who are big in influencer industry, people who are big in the big tech industry. So definitely check that out. Thank you so much. And don't forget you are too smart to not love yourself.